Here in beautiful rural Shropshire on the River Severn sits a key landmark in England's industrial history. This bridge was erected in 1779 and was one of the first freestanding cast iron structures anywhere in the world. It was part of a revolution in design and engineering that would see iron become much more widely used in construction around the globe. I'm Rob Bell engineer and adventurer, and I'm exploring some of the most fascinating and significant sites in England's industrial history. And we're here at the Iron Bridge because this marks the beginning of the Industrial Revolution, the rise of coal, and a shift in the way people lived and worked that continues to this day. To find out more about this industrial icon, I'm meeting English heritage historian Matt Thompson. Matt, hi, great to see you. Hi, good to see you too. I mean, apart from being this useful crossing over the river here, what exactly is the Iron Bridge? What, what's its significance? The Iron Bridge is this symbol of a remarkable period in our nation's history, the Industrial Revolution, when we saw you know, huge changes to society, changes in technology, changes in the way people just saw the world. It's the first freestanding metal structure. So when you look at the Burj Khalifa or you look at the skyline of New York and you see these steel-framed skyscrapers, the Iron Bridge is the kind of great, 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 great grandparent of all of these structures. So really what happened here in Shropshire is something that, that went on to transform the world. Well, tell me a bit more about the material used to construct this bridge and, and, and how that was actually made. Well, the bridge, as the name suggests, is made out of iron. And iron, of course, is the material of the Industrial Revolution. The name that's most associated with the bridge, and for very good reasons, is Abraham Darby III. And he was part of a consortium, really, of local iron masters who wanted to build a bridge across the river. But they also wanted to show how good they were at their trade, at what they could actually achieve. And, and so this is very much a sort of calling card for the iron masters of the South Shropshire Coalfield. This is a story that goes back a bit further, and it goes back to Abraham Darby III's grandfather. Abraham Darby came to Colebrookdale, and by 1709, he was producing iron using coke as a fuel and not charcoal. And he is credited with being one of the first people to use a mineral fuel to be able to smelt iron. And he could do that in a way that was cost effective. The use of coal was really the next step forward that enabled a more efficient process to take place. This was the real beginning to the Industrial Revolution. If this bridge was this showcase for this new material, iron, why build it here? Why, why build it in the Seven Gorge? What was it about this place? And this whole area, it's, it's perfect for the manufacture of iron. Not only do we have all the raw materials that you'd need, iron ore, limestone, and also coal that can be turned into coke for fuel. And it's the presence of the River Severn. This is the motorway, it's the superhighway of its day. You can bring goods in, your finished goods can go out to market. And also the steep sides of the gorge means that you've got a good supply of running water which can be used to power water wheels to give you blast or a draft into the furnaces. The Severn Gorge here, would have, it sounds like it would have been a very different place. Can you paint a picture of what it would have been like to stand here now, what we would see, what we'd hear, what was going on around us? I think some of the best pictures can be painted by people at the time. One poet, Anna Seward, came here and she wrote a poem called Oh Violated Coal Brook. In it she talks about the sort of sulfurious air, which would be all the smoke and fumes coming from the lead smelters and the, the iron furnaces. And she talks about the glassy stains on the water of the river, which of course there's lots of pollution going into the river as well. And, and she paints a picture, almost of a sort of an apocalyptic vision of industry destroying the environment. When we stand here and we see the bridge as this fantastic monument to the age of industry, we also have to really be aware of what the implications were of that moving forward in terms of climate change and the situation that we find ourselves in now. And what would life have been like here for, for people who were for living in the Seven Gorge or working here in all this industry? There was no health and safety really in those days, so it would have been hard work, it would have been incredibly hot work, and it would have been dangerous work. It was a remarkable place to visit, but it must have been a very difficult place to work. We look at the bridge today and we, and we celebrate it for, for, for what it represents. But when it was built, did it have an impact? Did it have an impact in Britain? 
Absolutely. I mean, it had an impact even before the bridge was opened. So Abraham Darby commissioned a painter, William Williams, to, to paint this beautiful painting of the bridge in all its glory. And very quickly, artists, writers, poets, travellers came here to, to see the Iron Bridge and to see the furnaces. It was a tourist attraction. And in 1986, it became a World Heritage Site, so that puts it on a par with the pyramids or Petra or these other fantastic sites. It's been a long journey of recognising its importance and, and English Heritage Now, as a charity, we're delighted to be the organisation that cares for this to ensure that in another 250 years' time it's still standing. Not only is it a hugely important piece of our nation's and our world history, but it's also still a bridge. It's not in a glass case. There's no velvet rope saying, do not sit, do not stand, do not walk on it. This is part of a vibrant living community. It's still a functional item. And there's something about that that I really love. And it feels like a real privilege to be able to do that, to come and stand, to see it, to walk across it, use it as it was first intended to get from one side of the river to the other. Matt, thank you so much for your time today. Thank you. As we've seen today, the Iron Bridge is more than just a simple structure. It's a British icon that's recognised around the world as being a landmark to the burgeoning industrial age. The introduction of cast iron engineering had inspired the world to create structures that weren't just functional, but beautiful as well. The Iron Bridge is accessible to visitors year round and it's the perfect place to take a break and enjoy the beautiful scenery of the Seven Gorge. Check the English Heritage website for more details.